Hello everyone, I'm Xiao Liang. I'm here to give a short overview of our results on post-quantum simulatable extraction. This is a joint work with Nai Hui Cha, Kai Ming Chong, and Takashi Yamakawa. Extractable commitments are a very basic and important cryptography primitive. It requires the existence of an extractor. Given the malicious committer C star, the extractor talks to the C star. It may potentially rewind C star. But at the end of the execution, the extractor is able to extract the value m star committed by the malicious c star. Here, I want to remark that in the classical setting, this primitive enjoys some property that we usually take for granted. That is, the extractor is able to not only extract the committed value m star, it can also simulate c star's post extraction state. This property is particularly important for protocol computation. For a classical protocol, this is usually easy to do because the extractor can just pretend to be the honest receiver to execute the protocol with C star. And then the extractor can rewind the C star back to the beginning of the execution and start the extraction procedure. However, what if the C star now is a quantum adversary? In this setting, simulating C star's post extraction state turns out to be hard work due to no cloning theorem we cannot record C star state and rewind it back. Now let's take a look at a typical construction of extractable commitments. To commit a value, the committer first sample two random strings A10 and A11, which XOR to the message M. This actually forms a secret sharing of the message M. Then the committer repeats this procedure for n times, where the n is a security parameter. Next, the committer commits to these shares independently. Next, the receiver sample a random string of length n. The receiver simply sends the random string c to the committer. The committer decommits to its initial commitment according to the receiver's string c. Now let us recall how to extract the committed value if the committer c is malicious. Our extractor simply sample a new random string c prime, send it to the c star, and learn the corresponding decommitments. As you can see, as long as C and C star are not identical, there will be one column in this matrix where the malicious committer decommits to both positions in one column. These two decommitments will allow us to recover the committed message M. This is how the extractor works in a classical setting. Now let's consider the scenario where the malicious C star is a quantum machine. In this case, it might be still possible to extract the committed value M star using, say, the techniques developed by Onru for post-quantum proof of knowledge. However, it is unclear how we can simulate the malicious C star's post-quantum extraction state. At this moment, you may think that maybe this construction is not good. If we choose another construction of extractable commitments, maybe we can extract the committed value while simulating the C star's post-extraction state. However, it is worth noting that this construction is popular for some reasons. For example, it makes use of only minimal assumptions. Also, it is constant run and makes black box use of long functions. The last two properties are particularly important for efficiency concerns. So, if you want to find an alternative construction for extractable commitment in the post quantum setting, you may also want to maintain these advantages. Now, let's look at the state of the art if we want all the properties mentioned earlier. Basically, there are four known constructions so far. Only the last construction makes black box use of the underlying primitive, and only the second construction manages to achieve constant runs. In this column, I also show if these constructions require quantum power for communication and computation. Moreover, the first construction is based on assumptions as strong as oblivious transfers. The second construction is algebraic assumptions, in particular, it requires the existence of fully homomorphic encryption for quantum circuits, as well as the LWE assumption. So, it looks like the current state of the art are not satisfactory. Actually, there is a reason. This problem is hard even if we only require constant run constructions and simulatable C stars post extraction state. The reason is that such an extractable column satisfying only these two properties would imply constant run zero knowledge, for which we have negative results. 
due to time limit, I won't explain these conditions for now. If you are interested, you can check this paper in our reference. Due to the lower bound mentioned earlier, we cannot achieve all the desired properties. Therefore, we choose to aim at a weaker notion for simulation called epsilon simulation. That is, instead of trying to simulate the post-extraction state STC star with negligible error, we now allow a noticeable error gap. More accurately, we require the existence of a simulation extractor SE. SE takes a noticeable function epsilon as a parameter. Now we compare two worlds. The first world is the real execution. We denote STC star as a state of the malicious commuter at the end of the execution. We use this notion to denote the transcript, which consists of all the interaction messages between C star and R. In the real world, we concern this tuple. This value denotes the message committed by C star. You can think of it as bounded in this transcript. The second board is a simulation extraction word. This SE talks to C star. It can potentially rerun C star. At the end of the interaction, the SE outputs a tuple, which is supposed to be the simulated post extraction state and the message committed by C star. We say that a extractable commitment is epsilon simulatable if these two tuples are epsilon closed for any noticeable function epsilon. I want to remark that this weaker notion of simulation is still useful because epsilon simulation is always sufficient to imply ND based or game based security. Here, a typical example is that epsilon simulatable zero knowledge already implies witness indistinguishability. Now we ask a question if we are happy with this relaxed notion for simulation, can we build extractable commitments that maintain all the other advantages? And the answer is yes. In this work, we build such an epsilon simulatable extractable commitment. To execute our protocol, the honest part is does not need to be quantum, but it is secure against even quantum malicious committers. As applications, our extractable commitments imply two-party coin tossing, zero-knowledge argument of knowledge for NP and zero-knowledge arguments for QMA, and eventually we also obtain secure two-party computation. All these protocols also enjoy the advantages shown here. But since our extractable COM is only epsilon simulatable, we only manage to achieve epsilon simulatable version of these protocols. If, if you are interested, please look forward to our talk at full length. Here is the information for our talk, and you can also find the full version of our paper at this link. Thank you for your attention.